Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And today it's WinUAE on a Mac? What kind of voodoo or witchcraft is this? No, you're not seeing things, folks. Uh, some of you, and this is why I love my channel, uh, not just because like I can go back and look at videos on how to do things that I forget about. That's kind of why I made this channel, to be honest. But you, you guys, you guys and girls, you leave comments below, and uh, they're mostly awesome, by the way. I don't want to be—I don't want to be that kind of YouTuber who's like, "Oh, I have bad comments, and I'm really sad." No, that sucks when that happens, and I really feel for those folks. But no, you folks are really awesome because most of the time. Actually, all the time, you're really helpful. And one of the things someone said was like, hey, Q, why are you messing around with the FSUAE thing? So if you look down here, right, FSUE launcher, why are you messing around with that? You really don't need that anymore. You should just be using like WinUAE. But I was like, but it's WinUAE, you know, Windows Ultimate Amiga Emulator. Yeah, but you can just use Wine. It's a way to emulate Windows on your Mac. And I was like, oh, but I'm stupid. I don't know how to do those things. Like emulators that require like configuring and typing in things, I, I just kind of lose my brain on. So no, uh, he did say that, okay, well then you can just go to Code Weaver's website. You can buy their thing and it, it just automatically detects what you're trying to install and you don't have to worry about anything else. They will take care of it all for you. You can just click the start button and, and go. So. Here we are, and I have my WinUAE panel. Yeah, for those of you that are familiar with WinUAE, you will recognize the default configuration window here. And so the neat thing about how this works with uh, Code Weavers is it doesn't really open up like a Windows operating system, like the full screen thing. It just says like, you're trying to run a Windows program on your Mac. So I'm gonna install the things that that program needs, and that's it. And then I'm gonna show it to you. So here we are on my Mac. And I've got WinUAE, just the WinUAE's window. It almost looks like it's written to work as a Mac program. It looks like a Mac program, like it, it's, just, it's just sitting here. So I went to configurations and it found my, you know, A4000, I loaded it. And uh, I just went ahead and clicked start. There you go. And sure enough, we're in my, uh, my, my emulated Amiga. This is, uh, I normally use FSUEE for this, but here we are, we're in it. But this is WinUAE, which is like the most updated to date, you know, has all the latest cool things and, you know, and fixes and tweaks and yeah, you have access to it all. And, if, and of course in the Mac, you press function F12 and it brings up the WinUAE panel like you saw before. So, you know, it's all here, everything you need to do on your Mac and it works, it works great. And it's all being run through Wine, through the Code Weavers version of it. There's a couple things I did have to do. First off, you're seeing it full screen, and it's you know the aspect is is mostly correct. Now the scaling is not perfect. It's not like integer. So if you look really really close here, if you hit pause in the video and like you know zoom in or whatever, yeah, like the W and Workbench is kind of fat and chunky. There's there might be ways to fix that. I'm still learning, so don't don't bite my head off on that. But I did figure out how to get it full screen and centered like this. I also figured out so that when I launched my my Lightwave program, that uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't you know crop the sides of the program or you know cut off the side here, so I can't see what's over here. It doesn't support JIT, at least as far as I know. If you turn on JIT, it basically tries to hack the matrix and it just crashes. It does this. It puts up this crazy screen and it, it, it goes bananas and doesn't work. So I turned JIT off, but I did set it WinUAE to, here, I'll just show you. I set WinUAE to, you know, fastest possible, right? Fastest possible. And that's it. So you can see here, 60 to 40, more compatible, JIT turned off, MMU, you know, FPU, of course, because I need that for Lightwave. I always, I always check the more compatibles when I can because I'm using 3D software and I know it's really sensitive to that stuff. And I went over here to RAM and bumped up the Z3 to 128, you know, a little bit of things, but no RTG boards, no expand, you know, just the chipset is an A4000 AGA NTSC, kind of the standard stuff. So yeah, I was really noticing how quick and uh, fast this was, by the way, this is, this is quick, this is really good. So it's definitely faster than a Mega 4000 with an 040. So for those of you that have never owned an Amiga, if you're like, oh, I'm gonna go on eBay and get an Amiga 4000 with the 6040 and it's gonna be this fast. No, it won't be this fast. It's not, it won't be this fast. Sorry, 
But uh, yeah, the emulator definitely is uh, still giving it a boost even without JIT. But anyway, so how did I get this not to be uh, cropped or weird, right? So let's go back to that function F12. All my, Mac, all my Mac homies out there, function F12. I did need to go down and go to filter and look here at the filter screen. What did he do? What did Q do on the filter screen? Well, he went over here, this is, says this is native, and then masks, none, and then here where this says no scale, it'll, it'll default to no scaling. I set it to full screen max, okay? Full screen max. And then down here, when you, when you turn this on to full screen max, that will expose this feature down here. And I said, keep aspect ratio, and I just left it at VGA. That's all I did, okay? That's all I did. Didn't touch anything else here. For display, I went to full window, okay? Full window, and over here where it says centering, I said horizontal and vertical, okay? Display, settings, full window, centering and vertical. And I didn't touch anything else. It all It's all just what it's supposed to be. That's all I did, and that made Full screen light wave, not be cropped on the sides, left and right. Yay, everything's happy, yay. I was, I was, I was really actually really thrilled about that. So, you know, and then even modeler. So if you launch modeler now, I don't know, this is one of the weird things. So when I launch my modeler program, for anybody, any, anyone out there, anyone out there who's watching this that's a an Amiga light wave person, why is my modeler doing this light wave five toaster implate EGS Spectra found G-Lock board found? I don't know what this is. I don't know what's going on. I have looked at the modeler config, the modeler startup commands. I've looked at the information on the, on the, on the tool icon for modeler. I cannot figure out why it's doing this weird startup hack where I have to go come back to workbench and do that. And then now I can go back and use modeler. See, yay, modeler. I can come in here and create the coolest thing you'll ever see, which is a box, right? right? Isn't that great? Yeah, I'm not sure why Modeler is doing that. By the way, I do want to explain one other thing that I did need to tweak in the uh, WinUE settings because I'm on a Mac computer, okay? So let's, for example, let's go to like eyebrows. This is a terrible example. Why am I launching eyebrows to show you? Oh yeah, so the internet does work using BDS socket library. Uh, so yeah, it works. We're all good. We're all good here. So there you go, internet, yay. Let's launch Modeler again and go back to the workbench to do that and then do this. By the way, Q, what did you, how did you do, how did you multitask on a Mac back to the workbench? Well, duh, you just press left Amiga M or left Amiga N to do that. So left Amiga M, there you go, takes you back to the workbench. Press it again, takes you back to the next program. N takes you, you know, there as well. I mean, come on, that's like Amiga 101. But how do you do that on a Mac? There's no left Amiga M. So we gotta go here, okay? Let's go to input. This is really important. It's a, it's a little bizarre. And I may not be completely 100% on this, okay? See up here where it says all these little things here? Mouse, raw mouse, win you E keyboard. I went to the wine hid keyboard and I basically smashed the, uh, the button so that says test here. And then I pressed the left command button on my Mac keyboard, okay? Test. And then I press the left command. Well, Q, why did you press the left command button on your Mac keyboard? I simply wanted to assign a key on my Mac keyboard that could be left Amiga. And I wanted it to be a key that I know I was probably not gonna use on the Amiga. The left command key, the, the butterfly key on a Mac keyboard. So I pressed that and it let me know that's L menu, zero X 38. And it says left Amiga, right? Now, if you look at the top of the screen right now, it says input captured F12 equal exit. So I'm gonna press F12 to exit. So that right down here, as you can see, I assigned left Amiga. Fired up my emulator and it didn't work. But that's how I discovered it. So then I went to the wine keyboard, left menu, zero, X38, left Amiga. And what you can do is you click on that and then you say remap. And you can pick from a list of stuff like remap. And you can pick, pick from a list of stuff here that you can uh, you know, assign to it. And I picked the uh, left Amiga key. And that's how I got the left Amiga to work on, an, uh, on a Mac keyboard. I use the command, the butterfly button, and I can now switch back and forth, nice and happy. And I have like basically full Amiga keyboard support for this and I, I just love it. That was a, a fun little neat thing I discovered. And yes, by the way, the music works fine. There's no weirdness. You can see the scrolling is uh, pretty good there. That's not bad.
So yeah, the Amiga mod scene and you know the music's working great in here. I was I was totally stoked. I, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. All right, I want to wrap this video up. So I just want to show you the the speed. I guess that the people like to see the speed. I could show you. Oh well, you know I could show you sysinfo, but no one really cares about sysinfo anymore. They all they all get fussy. So let me show like my Apple Water scene. So this is by the way this is loading over my network off my NAS. I have a share set up for all my Amigas, whether they're fake Amigas, <laughs> the Mac is a, is a fake Amiga, or, you know, real ones, all the real ones I have sitting upstairs. Let me turn off all the stuff that makes this slow. Even on, 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 oh, and even on 060, this, this scene can be a little, a uh, eh, little intense. So let me go here and then go ahead and smash F9. You know, I've been, I've been showing you guys, whenever I do my podcast style videos like this, it's always FSUEE on my Mac, okay? I got yelled at, told me, don't do that, use WinUEE, and I thought they were crazy because, you know, that's a Windows program, and I don't wanna have to like install Parallels or Fusion, VMware Fusion, just, no, you don't have to do that. You can just install Code Weaver's Vine, you know, Wine impl imp implementation. It, it does all the things you need. And it does, it works great. I can't use JIT, which is a bummer. I can't do Super Speed Hyper Amiga, but that's fine because often I create content on my real Amigas and I take them over to the PC on the emulator and sometimes tweak them a little bit or I render them on the PC with the emulator. So it's nice to kind of keep things in synchronous, you know, speed. Like I don't want to, like work in hyper fast emulator mode on my Mac or PC and then take it over to the real media and be like, oh my God, this is so slow, right? Because I was taking advantage of all that fake speed. So remember, JIT is not enabled in this. It's not working. We'll fire up sysinfo. And yes, sysinfo doesn't work with emulators properly, but this is all relative. This is relative speed stuff. So, you know, if you're at home, you can fire up WinUEE or FSUEE or a real Amiga. We'll go ahead and smash speed. And as you're gonna see here, so yeah, 57 M, you know, MIPS and 20 M flops. That's that's kind of ridiculous. That's not a 68040. In fact, if you look down here, here's a 25 megahertz 68040 Amiga 4000. No, we're, we're so much fast that it, it just, we, we, we're blowing the chart away. So, but as you're gonna see over here, this is a lot slower than PyMiga. This is a lot slower. I, this might even be slower than the Apollo offerings. So this, this is not the fastest Amiga emulation you could ever do on your computer. Think about this for a minute. You're running an emulation of Windows so that you can run an emulation of Mac. In order to emulate Windows on Silicon Mac, Apple has to emulate an environment that allows you to emulate Windows with the Rosetta stuff. It's, it breaks my brain, I know. So considering we're going through all those hoops, this dry stone score, this MIPS and MFLOP score, that's actually fairly impressive. And look at the chip speed, by the way. <laughs> chip speed versus A600, 242. Now this might be an example of sysinfo not working with emulators properly and freaking this number out, but you guys saw it. Look, when, when I went into Lightwave, if you're using a 640 by uh, you know 400 high-res interlaced screen with eight colors in Lightwave, it's not this fast. The only time Lightwave has ever been this fast is with PyMiga, or running WinUE on a you know a, a Windows PC, that's when it gets to be this fast. So that's that's pretty awesome. So the chip speed may actually be legit. That's incredible. Wow, even PyStorm doesn't do this. PyStorm is faster than this emulator, by the way. So if you have a PyStorm, it will be faster at rendering and CPU processing than than this Code Weaver's WinUE on a Mac thing. But the graphics chip speed that you're seeing here on this Lightwave you know, layout window example here, this blows away what PyStorm can do. PyStorm, unfortunately, is, they still haven't really figured out their, their chip RAM speed thing. It's still really slow. I mean, it's faster. It's like 1.57 times the speed of an Amiga 600. That, of course, that pales in comparison to the, you know, 10X speed you get with PyMiga or the, like the 6X speed you get with an Apollo or this, which apparently is supposed to be, you know, 200, but I don't, I don't know if it's actually 200, but this is super, this is super quick. Thank you, by the way, everybody. Thank you for pointing out running WinUEE on a Mac. That's awesome. This is super cool. I'm glad it works. And yeah, this way I can always have the latest and greatest tweaks for my emulation on my Mac and uh, I can take advantage of all the fun stuff and all the shared configs I can do across both platforms. All right, I guess uh, that's it. I'm, uh, I'm done with this video.